This is Algebra 2 with Trig, 1C.5. We're going to talk about the quadratic formula, and the quadratic formula has a portion in it called the discriminant. So the quadratic formula can really be written in two formats. This is your line of symmetry. When you have a quadratic equation, the line of symmetry, negative b over 2a, we've talked about that before. The line of symmetry would be calculated by the negative b over 2a of the equation. This would be considered the distance that it takes to go, and it would be the same. It would just be one of them is positive and one of them is negative. Distance from your line of symmetry, and that would give you your two x-intercepts. So the quadratic formula calculates your two x-intercepts from your line of symmetry to the plus direction and to the minus direction. Since this is common denominators, we can actually combine these two together to write it as one big fraction. So when you do your calculations, be sure that you don't divide what's inside the square root by 2a, but you've got to divide everything by 2a. Let's come on down and try our first question. When we look here, we see that the x squared plus the bx is equaling this value. So we need to bring the 6 back across. So that your equation equals 0. Now you're in standard form. Now your a value equals 1, your b value equals 7, and your c value equals negative 6. You should label that to make it clear you know exactly what you're looking at. Now you're going to be solving for x. x equals negative b, so negative 7, the opposite of whatever your b is. So in this case, it's negative 7, plus or minus the square root of 7 squared, we don't need parentheses when it's a positive number being squared. We can just say 7 squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. So to start calculating out your x values using the quadratic formula, you need to show this step. You need to take the time to plug in your numbers you're not using your calculator to plug everything in in two magic answers. You have to show the different steps. This would be one of the steps that we're looking for. Then we have x equals negative 7 plus or minus. If you can calculate the inside all in your head or with a calculator, the inside is called the discriminant. That is fine. If you would like to break it up into two pieces, we have 49 plus we have 24 all over 2. So that's really going to be negative 7 plus or minus 73 over 2. There's your exact answer for the two x-intercepts. How are we going to use our calculator to determine their decimal version? We take negative 7, plus we have the square root of 73. We can hit enter, then divide that by 2. We got 0.77. And we also have negative 7 minus the square root of 73 divided by 2. So we have 0.77 and we have negative 7.77. Those would be your two values, 0.77 and negative 7.77. Oh, can't see that. There they are.
So if you're taking the square root of a value, you're going to have two answers. Negative 7 plus or minus some amount is going to give you two different answers. Okay, our next question. We do have the option of dividing everything by 2. You could reduce this. You're welcome to reduce it. But the cool part about the quadratic formula, you don't have to reduce it. It might make the number smaller and easier to work with. That would be an advantage. But you don't have to. The A value is 2. The B value is negative 8. The C value is 8. So our x value is going to be the opposite of the b. So it's the opposite of negative 8. Plus or minus the square root of b squared. Now notice here, you have to use parentheses around the negative. Minus 4ac. All over 2a. So you've got to use your first step, and that is to plug in all your numbers into the quadratic formula. That's step number one. Then your next step, two negatives make a positive. If you would like to set this up individually, like negative 8 squared is 64, and 4 times 2 times 8 is... 8 times 8 is 64. And then down here is 4. 64 minus 64, that's 0. So that's just 8 over 4. So that's the value of 2. You got one single answer. Notice why we got one single answer. We have 8 plus or minus the square root of 0. 8 plus or minus nothing. So it's just 8. 8 being divided by 4. You get one single answer if your value inside the radical is a 0. One answer if it's a 0 because you're adding and subtracting nothing. Here we add and subtracted a value that was a little bit bigger than 8. So we got two answers. Here you got one answer. Moving on to our third example, you have some choices here. I typically don't like to have the A value be negative. So if I have my option, I'm going to add X squared to both sides, and I'm going to subtract the 2X to both sides. These are going to cross off and be 0, and I'm going to have a positive X squared, a negative 2X, and a positive 5. It's okay if you would use it as negative x squared, positive 2x, and subtract the 5. You'll get the same answer. Doesn't matter. Next, we look that a value equals 1, the b value is negative 2, and the c value is 5. So for us to solve for x, we're going to say the opposite of b the opposite of our negative 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared. The b has to be in parentheses. Have to put that in parentheses. The worst thing is if you call that a negative 4 once you square it. Minus 4 ac all over 2 times a. You have to have this as your work when you're working through the quadratic formula. Made that pretty clear. X equals two negatives make a positive. We're pretty familiar with that. When you square a negative, you get a positive, And this is minus 20. So this is going to be 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 over 2. This one you would need to show also. Then we're going to have 2 plus or minus 
for i because we can take the square root of the 16 and it has a negative so we're pulling the negative out as an i and the square root of 16 is 4 so we have 4i we should break this into two separate fractions a real and an imaginary number so we have 1 plus or minus 2i as a final result Looking here are the rules for the discriminant. The discriminant is the value that is inside the square root. b squared minus 4ac is inside the square root. So if that b squared minus 4ac is a positive number, if it's greater than 0, you're going to have two real solutions. Your parabola is going to touch the x-axis twice two real solutions. We experienced that up here with the first example when our discriminant was positive 73. So b squared minus 4ac gave us 73. So we added and subtracted this value, which was a little bit more than 8, and we got two answers. If b squared minus 4ac equals 0, then the vertex is sitting right on the x-axis. So that means that there's going to be one real solution. So when the discriminant equals 0, you're only going to have one answer. And that's because the vertex is sitting right on the x-axis. We experienced that over here where the discriminant was 0. That means you're adding nothing to your opposite of b divided by 2a. And we got one answer. And then if you're less than 0, if you're a negative like we had up here, you're going to have two imaginary solutions. That's when your parabola is never touching the x-axis. That's when your discriminant is negative, too imaginary. Has no real solutions, no x-intercepts at all. One real solution, which is one x-intercept. And this has two real solutions, which are two x-intercepts. Notice the discriminant is just b squared minus 4ac. It's not the square root part. Just b squared minus 4ac. So flipping it over... We'll come here to the first example. We look at our equation. And we notice the A value is 1. The B value is 6. And the C value is 5. So using our discriminant, B squared minus 4AC, we don't use the square root. We just use the b squared minus 4ac. That is 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5. That's 36 minus 20. That's 16. Our discriminant is 16. So that means there's going to be two real solutions. Something else that's really important for knowing about the discriminant, that I use the discriminant somewhat regularly, is that if I'm trying to decide if a problem is factorable, if a problem is factorable, the discriminant will be a perfect square. So since we got 16 or maybe 9 or 4 or 1 or 144 or whatever, perfect square number you can consider. As long as you have a perfect square from the discriminant, then you know you can factor it. So that means this is actually factorable. So if you're trying to decide if you are factorable, you could look at the discriminant and helps decide if it's factorable. The A value here is 1, the B value is 6, the C value is 9. 
So we're using b squared minus 4ac, 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 9. That's 36 minus 36, that equals 0. That's going to be 1 real solution. And we experienced that on the other side, where the discriminant was 0. That means you're adding and subtracting nothing from the opposite of B. You get one answer. Then our last one, the A value is 1, the B value is 6, and the C value is 13. So using B squared minus 4AC, because that's the discriminant, that's the part that's inside the square root of the quadratic formula. 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 13. 36 minus 52. That gives us negative 16. That gives us 2... imaginary solutions. All right, our last question to go over. We've already talked about the dropping formula. This is a formula and we drop an object so we have our original height of the object Negative 16 is pretty much the gravity that's pulling it down. That never changes. So this is our parabola that's opening downwards of an object that falls. If we toss an object, launch it, throw it, kick it, we're going to have velocity to that object. So this is going to be the initial velocity. Initial velocity. This is the initial height. And then the h or the h of t is your final height, whatever you're trying to calculate. And t, of course, is your time. So if we are going to toss a ball, we're juggling apparently, and we're going to toss the ball up into the air at 40 feet per second. It's probably not going 40 feet in the air. It's just traveling at a speed of 40 feet per second. And it's going to fall back to the ground because the gravity wins that eventually. And it's going to fall to a height of 3 feet. It is starting at 4 feet. So we're going to take our equation of negative 16 t squared plus our initial velocity times t plus our h of o. That is your formula. We want to know when will it be 3 feet. We're on earth, so we're using negative 16 as our gravity. Velocity is a positive number. In this case, we're throwing an object, so it's a positive 40t, and our initial height that we're tossing it from is 4 feet. So if we were going to try to figure out what t value is going to make this work, it would be convenient for us to make it equal to 0 on one side. I often say I don't like the a value to be negative, but in this case, we can experience what that looks like. We are solving for t. So we're going to use the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of negative 16 squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. That's going to give us negative 40 plus or minus 256 
plus because a negative and a negative. This is where people are going to make a mistake. They're just going to put down their minus sign, but there's two negatives. Two negatives make a positive. So 64. <coughs> and this is negative 32. So that itself is going to be negative 40 plus or minus. Oh, I'm sorry. I did make a mistake here. What value goes in here? B. That should be our B value, which should have been 40, which should have been 1,600. Okay, so now we have the square root of 1,664 over negative 32. So that's pretty much as far as we can go by hand. So if we take our calculator, we can do negative 40 plus the square root of 1664 divided by negative 32. And we get a t value to be negative 0.02. And if we do it the other way, minus the square root of negative 1664 divided by negative 32, we get a positive time. And that's what we want. Positive seconds. We do not want negative seconds.